All right, both nerds are happy. What we are going to do, guys, is east, east, Europe, east, east. Uh, that's what both guys say. It's kind of fair. That's uh, a nice middle down the way or middle down the road. So that makes them happy. Uh, and then we can go. Did we already do vetoes? Uh, if not. Mm. They're taking their sweet time. <laughs> okay. Australia vetoes first. He vetoes altitude. Photos players video on altitude. We have Danger Jill with four months saying, let's go, Roddy. Been too busy working lately to watch every day, but thank you for all the great content. It's all good, mate. I am glad that you are still able to watch a little bit. Still enjoying StarCraft. That's all that matters. East, East, e Europe, East, East. How does that make sense? That makes sense because the advantage that Elaze would have on Europe is way bigger than the advantage uh, Australia has on East. But obviously, Australia does have an advantage playing on East. So, we find something that's very playable for both of them, but obviously not ultra lopsided one way, so Elaser has at least home server one time. It, it's not that uh, Australia lives right next door to the East server. America is pretty big. Huh? Uh, Lambo says completely fair would probably be West Europe, West Europe, East. That is also an option, but neither of them suggested that uh, and he lays that playing east is fine but then i decided to give him at least europe once mm. <laughs> map one will be dragon map two is ancient but i do not hate that suggestion the only thing that i kind of hate about that a bit is that it will just increase the amount of high ping video gaming and uh, esl rules would probably indeed be everything on europe east but i don't think that's totally fair because that would definitely favor the american a bit more over the man from <coughs> poland Danger, gifting a subby to the man that has played some F1 with us, but has been dodging me lately, Logic. I didn't even have a chance to talk about it yet, guys. I know a lot of you guys are excited for Stormgate. But next week, F1 23 is being released, baby. I'm going to be in Sweden. And I'm freaking downloading that game on my laptop. I'm going to bring my joystick to Sweden. Everyone's going to be like, Roddy, you want to hang out, have some beers? I'm going to be like, no. I'm going to sit in my room, play some F1, baby. <laughs> Lambo waiting for service selection before betting. Lambo will always back his boy. The Clats brothers are still a thing, even if they've gone different ways in life and one is on Team Liquid and the other one is on Shopify Rebellion. You don't just break a bound as strong as the Clats. So the Clats are forever and Lambo will always back you lazy. All right, map order, guys, is Dragon, Ancient, Royal Blood, Neo Humanity and Babylon if necessary. What are beer prices like in Sweden? It's kind of expensive, but I think if you're not in the big city and you're not going to a fancy bar, it's nothing crazy. It's It won't break the piggy bank, but it's also not the cheapest place where they could have hosted an event. You wonder if Korea would be fair or better? Absolutely not. That would just give both of them absolutely awful ping. And that's not good for any of us. So, It's obviously fine if it's playable for one, but slightly more playable for the other. We obviously prefer that over dreadful for both of them. Making both of them play on Korea would not be good. The, the players wouldn't enjoy that. We would enjoy that less because the level of gaming would be a lot lower. So, no. That's not necessary. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind, Lambo. But hey, we're all going to, uh, we're all going through an airport, and airports have plenty of reserves, and everybody can bring a little something, something, and we can have a great time after the games are done. I'm not worried about that. Indy is ready, Australia is ready, Laser is ready. Our final best of five of the night. But I do think, guys, I will stay on for a little bit after the big rain bouts. Uh, we can do some ladder games. Or maybe you guys can watch some very intense German Terran Diamond League video gaming. I look forward to Lino destroying another keyboard as he's trying to micro his 12 Marines. I look forward to chat telling you guys how intense Lino looks when he's playing video games. Mm. Here we go. Let's get it on. 
Round one. Fight. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who managed to win the ESL Masters America. He has crowned himself once more as the strongest player in that region. Uh, representing the Maturino boys, this is Australia. Previously Alpha X, obviously, but Alpha X stopped operating and now they all represent Maturino. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who said he was available last week and this week. So we got him for this week. And of course, he is a main event kind of guy, hailing from Poland, representing Team Liquid, the incredibly handsome and in shape Team Liquid Sea Laser. Bop, 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 bop. Miko with uh, the all time goaded Instagram post of the year. What is this? Oh, oh, oh. Australia is going to make things weird immediately, but the laser is all over it. I wasn't even paying attention, guys. But we have a pylon and not one, but two gateways. Australia inspired by Dave Testa strategies. Mars Bar taking notes as we speak. <laughs> all right, guys. We are video gaming. I thought we would only see this in the opening match of the night, but apparently we see this in the main event as well. I have a hard time believing this is going anywhere for Australia, but, you know, who am I? Sometimes I can be a bit of a hater. I don't really believe in this stuff, guys. If this stuff was good, we'd all be doing it. <laughs> the probe is stuck. Now you have to cancel your gates, no? Or maybe you can let one finish, but you cannot let both of them finish. That's crazy. Yeah. Letting one gateway finish, I think, is somewhat acceptable, because then at least you can build a cyber core at home. Uh, but yeah, this was a bit of a disaster. Obviously, a lot of mining time was lost, but that doesn't make up for the fact of uh, all the cancelled buildings. And obviously, the dead... Oh! Oh! Wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, there are links on the production tab. What is happening here, guys? This feels crazy to me. I think we should cancel that pilot. Was that a bait? I hope it was bait. I think we should cancel. Australia says, F you, Roddy. I'm not cancelling anything. Okay. I mean, if the adept gets out, then I guess we can video game. Oh my goodness. Australia is crazy. He's literally crazy. But now I'm a believer again. I definitely wasn't a believer earlier. But now I'm kind of a believer. Because we're going to have adepts against a guy that doesn't have link speed for centuries. No, it's definitely not just to, to get one adept here. We want to get multiple adepts. He's also expanding. If I was Elaser right now, I'd actually be kind of fuming and like, what is this? This is so annoying. Because dealing with adepts off creep when you don't have link speed, and that's not fun. There is no Zerg on this planet that enjoys that. Unless it's my adepts. I lose my adepts against slow Zerglings. Hmm. Well, it is happening. Two gateways. Online. On the other side of the map. At the bottom of the ramp of laser, Australia is supply blocked, and it's a pretty hefty one. But he does have two adapts. Link speed is now officially on the production tab, so it's gonna take, uh, give or take 90 seconds before Elaser can finally do something about all of this. Is there a world where Australia even gets batteries here and stuff, or? I have no idea where we go with this. I was, this, this does feel like something you want to protect for quite some time. Even if you have a nexus on the other side of the map, like you can just lose power to two good to two gateways. We have one stalker now as well. That's actually kind of cool because the stalker has superior range compared to the adepts, and obviously the stalker is a unit that can shoot up as well. There is a creep toward that got dropped. Uh, Astrea is gonna see it, but I think it's a little bit too late to do something about it. Uh, not getting that creep tumor is annoying. Astrea really wants that queen. Does not quite get the queen. Seven worker advantage on the side of Australia. We've got a big brain emoji, guys, and this right here is big brain video gaming. I am looking at it, and I'm not sure if I love it or I hate it. <laughs> I guess it truly really just depends on the outcome of the game. Link speed is about to finish up, though. We've got 23 links. Good micro on the Queens by a laser. As all of these units are gonna get surrounded. I think you need to recall, though. No, I do not believe that the adepts are gonna do well here. Minus two stalkers, that is painful. I think maybe a snap recall would have been the best choice there. Australia instead decides to take the fight, but you know, stalkers here are pretty fat. We need to have a lot of surface area. Another adept pop. Yeah, now we're gonna recall that. We don't want to save the entire army, but we recall that little guy. I guess that was absolutely needed, because otherwise you'd have zero DPS on your side of the wall. 
But even one adept is actually gonna struggle a little bit with 15 links. If I was Elaze, I'm, I'm committing. I'm committing for this pylon. Yeah, I, I don't care. You have one adept. What are you gonna do with it? I think that pylon would have died before this battery was done. Yeah, the queen micro was very sexy. I have been watching tennis today, guys, and at this point, I think it's 30 love in favor of E-Laser. That was weird. That was a bit hard to call for a little while, but I think at this point, E-Laser is absolutely cooking. <laughs> One of them gets warped in on the other side of uh, what is now a full wall-off. Australia is going to have a hard time just getting a third base up, man. Because even if you have a void ray... Getting a probe to the location of the third base when all you have is two adepts without resonating glaive and a void ray That's pretty difficult But going for a two base all in right now that seems Insane because that's just going to hit so late and it's going to be so weak That even pure queen is going to smash it now queens are pretty good, but uh, It looks like the laser has wetted the storm has survived the proto shenanigans and should be totally fine right now. Ryan Fetch says it's okay, Chartled Void Ray all in, let's go. This is gonna hit so late, man. By the time that that is going to hit, you're gonna run into 60, 70 supply of roaches and hydras. I don't think there's a way for um, Australia, but. Australia probably still have a big win. He is indeed a very happy guy. Australia is a guy that always just tries to have fun as well I think when he's playing Starcraft. This is an oracle that's so weird and random that I guess Elaze didn't really expect it. It's also an oracle that's on the verge of falling. In the end Australia will keep it alive. Gets four drones so that's not too shabby. Oh, now we still lose it. <laughs> yeah okay it's a bit of a train wreck of a first game guys. Australia tried to be cheeky, naughty and go full NA but maybe that works on NA. Laser says that does not work against the European Titans. Hmm? We have another Oracle. I would describe this Oracle as the negative IQ Oracle. The first one was a bit weird, but the second one makes so little sense that it could be great. But Elaser is the king of the clowns. And he is ready. We have now a war prism with what? Four zealots? Cool. You know you're in trouble when you're harassing with four slow zealots and your opponent has six hydras and three roaches. That's when you know you're in trouble. Oh no. Poor Max Angel, guys. Can we get a Robo Bay up? Is that a play? Is there a world where we can get... We are getting a second Robo? The, I like the second Robo if it was pure roaches that we would be playing against. But obviously it's not. It's it's a whole bunch of Hydras. And the Hydra then has been spotted. I know, I know that not everyone out there believes in the Hydra guys, but... The Hydra is a mean killing machine that I've actually... Okay, we have a Robo Bay. I completely missed that. Then it makes a whole lot of sense, guys. I apologize for missing that. We do have a Robotics Bay, so then I do like that second Robo. We're gonna try to get a couple of Disruptors out. And maybe if the first disrupted, if the first purification nova actually connects in a very big way, then then we are video gaming. But the first nova I think needs to accomplish something. If the first nova is a whiff, then the laser has a solid 15 second window where he can just do whatever the hell he wants to this third base of Australia. I want to applaud Australia though. For oh, that nova has potential! <laughs> Absolutely perfect! Absolutely perfect! Oh my goodness, Australia is an absolute mad genius. Now we do have a cannon that's... Ah, okay. Still not enough. Elaze just says, F it. All right, that Nova was big. Unfortunately, the battery there was not done yet. This this would have been such a sweet battery to overcharge with those Archons, with the Immortal. That would have been fantastic. This battery was a bit too far away, and I think that's why Australia didn't want to use overcharge. We do have that War Prism Arrest still happening on the other side of the map, but... Losing this base is a problem. Recall was used as well in an Immortal, I believe it was. And yeah, that obviously uh, is not going to be good enough. It's a shame. I feel like we missed one battery there. That is a, not a good Nova. As four more Hydras fall. Uh, Elaze is going to take out all his anger on another Disruptor. One more Nova flies forward, gets a few of these Hydras. 
We've got another disruptor in the back of the natural. And can we land one more good shot? That's no, not bad. It is not bad, but it's too much Zerg. Elaser just got uh, too far ahead economically, where even if he ate one absolute monstrous Nova to the face, he was very decisive afterwards, and he just went for it. And he's gonna close this game out, and the man from Poland is absolutely gonna take the 1-0 lead here. That got scary for 0.1 second, but then Elaser said, I don't care, I'm still gonna just right click in, I'm gonna get on top of all your units, and this game belongs to me. Australia is forced to tap out, Elaser wins it, but boy oh boy did Australia land a sweet purification Nova there. We lacked one battery guys. We absolutely just lacked one battery that was actually in range of those units. Because Hydra, Ling and a few Roaches would have a very hard time killing like three Archons in range of an overcharged battery. Or killing an Immortal or Disruptors in range of an overcharged battery. The replay of the Nova. Uh, I don't want to make them wait. Uh, it's main event. It's you know, I, I don't want to potentially cause a delay there. I could have done it quickly, but I didn't do it. But you can watch it back on the Basilisk YouTube channel, mate. What about that? Or just in my VOD. Thank you so much to uh, Danger Joel for giving us five subbies. I love it. Let's go, matey. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Man, it's awesome. The sheriff is in there. One of my favorites. A pretty wild, bizarre first game where Elaser survives the craziness, gets himself in a very good spot. Australia does land the best possible Nova. Maybe he should have used Overcharge immediately, right, on that one battery that was in the mineral line, but I don't think that really would have made a difference because the battle units were just too far away, so at best you're going to run one unit towards that battery. He clearly wanted to wait until the battery on the left side of the Nexus would go up, and that could have really been a game changer because then the Archons can survive. Then the Immortal survives. Then the Cannon survives a bit longer. And then the second Disruptor that shows up and the third one, they would actually be a problem. But that did not happen. As we have Dave Testa giving a stubby to Thorns. The man who just suggested that we would play these games on the Korean server. Now that, my friends, is what Lambo would call a hot take. <laughs> Round 2. Fight! In the bottom left side of Ancient, we are looking at the main base of the man from Poland, taking the 1-0 lead, uh, representing Team Liquid. This is the laser. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who still has home server advantage. He is down 0-1, and this time around, that first pylon is being built on his own side of the map, uh, representing the Maturino boys. This is Australia. then I think uh, the fact is that that is your opinion and then you have two guys who do this for a living and they have a completely different opinion than you so then you may look into the mirror and be like huh maybe the two guys that do this for a living and play this game 24 7 that they might sort of understand this better than I do or you can just be like no I'm Thor and my opinion matters the most to each their own mate you choose whatever path you want to go down okay and we will support you in your journey because that's what we do. Thank you to Ravi for the 300 bits as well. Ravi, Ravi. I'm gonna miss you, Ravi. I hope I get to see you soon. I know that you were thinking of uh, visiting Home Story Cup. Is that a realistic thing at the moment, Ravi, or have you given up on that? Because that would be super fun. Fear Dragon in Krefeld. <laughs> He'd be living his best life. Game he would out. have to travel to Dusseldorf to find anything he could eat. <laughs> Hello, Password. As we had a tiny pause between these two. Still deciding if I'd go, it'd be an Iron of Mouse. If you get a bunch of mouse, mate, you may as well use them. I've got a whole bunch of them. And I think I'm using them for the one country... That I haven't gone to yet. And I'd kind of like to go to once. Game and that's resumed. Japan. I think maybe sometime later this year. If there are no Starcraft 2 tournaments. And I cannot play Stormgate. Maybe I will fulfill my lifelong dream. Of visiting uh, the Hachiko statue. And taking a picture. <laughs> PP is pause please. Or it's uh, your actual PP. 
whatever you want it to be, mate. But for most of the pro gamers, it stands for pause, please. Do you like sushi, Roddy? I do like sushi, but I'm not in love with sushi. I'm not someone that goes crazy over sushi. Like, if you ask me, Roddy, you want to go to a fancy sushi restaurant or Buffalo Wild Wings, I pick Buffalo Wild Wings any day of the week. And I know that may sound crazy to some of you guys, but... Like, I don't hate sushi, just... It doesn't get me overly excited. It's okay, but it's not my favorite. But give me a Miller Lite and some spicy garlic wings. And I can unleash the beast, baby. <laughs> Have you had high-end omikaze in Tokyo? Oh, I, I just explained that I've never gone to Japan, so... <laughs> no, I didn't have anything in Tokyo, mate. <laughs> We've got... Uh, hello, Ripple Carry. Long time no see, matey. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of adapts here on the edge of creep. Obviously, guys, I want to pay a bit of attention. In the beginning of the show, I always like to meme a little bit and interact a lot with you guys, but... Obviously, the deeper we get into the big brain bouts, the more I actually want to pay attention to the strategies that are being used. And uh, this, my friends, is a strategy. I know that Australia has done this in the past. Uh, this actually reminds me of a very long time ago where Australia already played styles like this in WCS America Challenger against Scarlet. And back then, Australia was just an up-and-comer. He was not a big name yet. I was always fascinated by these random gateway aggression, uh, aggression builds that he came up with. And I always thought that they would suck, but then they didn't suck. It feels like this shouldn't be all that great. But obviously Australia does it for a reason and he finds a lot of success with it. He lays are running around with links trying to figure out what the hell is this exactly. Like, is this resonating glaive adept? Is this just a bunch of adept into something else? Like, what are we uh, working with? Australia has scouted a decent amount, but he has not seen this pilot in the gateway. The adapt count is so crazy high. But obviously, the link count is pretty high too. But these adapts don't have glaives. Like, Elias is about to have a heart attack. If these adapts have glaives, he's in so much trouble. And now he sees that the shots are not orange, and he's like, maybe I'm not in trouble. Maybe I am in trouble, because it's a lot of adapts. Like, nobody knows. <laughs> We've got two random adapts there. Unfortunately, they didn't sync up with the rest of the party. So the first two adapts do get cut off, and that's a bit unfortunate. Do we cancel the shade or we let it finish? We let it finish! I mean, it's a good... Okay, that's actually a very good position for adapts. Very little surface area here for the links to attack them. Queen's out of position. And Max Angel is cooking here, guys. Max Angel is absolutely cooking as he does let another shade finish up. He feels that this is the spot. Obviously, with Glaives, all of these links would be massacred. Without Glaives, it's a bit more painful, but the Adepts are doing quite alright. There are more Adepts still left over in the main base. It's already a 17 worker lead. Australia may be on two bases, guys, but this man builds probes like no one else out there. He's still finding damage. And Lays is probably wondering, what the hell is this? And now he's going for the Petty Mech! We've got double Stargate Phoenix as a follow-up. And if we don't drop a Dark Shrine with this build, I'm going to be pissed. And I know we don't have a Twilight Council at the moment. But if we go double Stargate here, I want to see a freaking Dark Shrine, okay? This is a perfect game for it. There's a 25 worker lead. I believe this is the Rotterdam. No, mate. This is way smarter than anything I do. It may look similar, but it's not. I don't play it like this at all, because I don't have the skills to play it like this, but I do really like it. So maybe I should try to play it like this. I mean, this game is a massacre. The man who's down 0-1 surprises us with a 4-gate, and... How many adepts do you guys think have been made in this game? So not fallen, we have 9 adepts out, but have been made. I think we're looking at like 35 adepts. As we have 2 more adepts shading into the natural. You think 22 in total? I think way more. We've got 9 right now. And we have 22 going down, so it was 30, actually, because one of them just died. 30 adapts. 30 adapts into double Stargate, but no resonating glaives. Like, if somebody would tell you, yo, guys, I've, I've, got a, I've got a build. And you're like, what is it? And you're like, it's 30 adapts. It's like, okay, like, when does it hit? Like, when do you draw? No, just 4 gate, 30 adapts. And you're like, that's not a build, but it is a build. <laughs> We will know where we will see you. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, maybe Australia is the kind of guy that actually would have a build for me. Because Australia is a very smart guy. And like a lot of people think like, oh, just play PvP like Max Packs. But if that was that simple, everyone would do it. Like that's just 
borderline impossible. I think Australia is the kind of guy that can really identify or like put himself in the mind of a less skilled player and then come up with something that would work. But I'm a I'm an absolute dinosaur and I would never really play something unless I've done it a million times. I really don't like like freestyling stuff. <laughs> that scares me. The idea alone scares me. One thing that does make me sad is that we don't have plus one air weapons, but I don't really think that this game comes down to plus one air weapons. Lambo's fuming by me even bringing it up because he's like, it doesn't matter, Roddy. I was like, I know, I know it doesn't matter, but I still would have liked to see it. GG gets called, guys. 30 adepts without a Twilight Council into double Stargate Phoenix. That was the build. Australia cooked something up and it tasted absolutely fantastic. 8 minutes and 11 seconds is all it took. I, mean, I don't want to go full nickel back on you guys, but look at this graph, okay? <laughs> look at this graph. <laughs> if you look at this graph, you're like, I want that build, okay? <laughs> that looks like uh, something straight out of a uh, Protoss art book, if such a thing would exist. I know it's a bit dark right now, guys. Uh, so we are switching over to the European server. Indy is going to host, and I'm going to open one of my blinds because there's actually still a lot of daylight. But it's just not really entering my house at the moment. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys can see me better. And my marvelous tan. Roddy, who will win? Benil Darius or Charles de Bronx Oliveira? I actually think Darius. And I have no idea what uh, the odds are. Or like the betting line is. I haven't even checked that yet. But I... Uh, I have the feeling that Oliveira is one of these guys that went on a proper run, was amazing, but now that he lost the belt, I think he lost his spark. I think he lost his magic. I think he went from nothing into living the good life, probably has partied a little bit and enjoys the fact that he has made absolute shit tons of money. So I think that real passion that he had earlier, I think that's gone. So I think uh, Benil Darius wins this weekend, but I have no idea if he's the favorite or not. Round three, fight. In the bottom left side of Royo Blatt, we are looking at the main base of the man who now has home server advantage. This is the one game that we are playing on the European server, and that is why we need another PP. As Australia said, we need to restart. I guess he has the uh, interference bug. I have that bug where you drag scroll and the cursor stays on. That sounds like a PC problem. Mm. Olivera thrives in chaos that I don't think Darius allows. Uh, that that too like darius is just one of these guys that people don't get excited over but i he's, he's just very solid like he's very good he seems to be incredibly hard working i think he's in excellent shape not the most exciting fighter ever but i think a very likable guy and i think he gets the job done but i don't think i'm staying up uh, for that i'm not watching it live i've got a very busy sunday guys i am attending a pokemon convention from my man monkeloid and after that, I have to go to the lake to hang out with uh, friends and family. So I'm definitely not staying up for it. But I'll watch it in the morning. And I won't use my phone. I'm not going to try to spoil myself. So I still get a bit of fun. Did we ever confirm the player formerly named Time renamed himself after the MMA fighter? Yeah. I think he said that. Do you have a 10? Of course, mate. What do you think it is? The other day, people actually thought I went live with a filter. They're like, Roddy, do you have a filter? Like, come on. What do I look like? A 90 year old that has TikTok? Like, no, it's not a filter. I've just been sitting in my backyard, rubbing my belly, enjoying the great outdoors, okay? You following the NBA Finals at all? I follow it in a way that I wake up in the morning and I watch the three, four minute recap. Like, I've been trying to follow both NHL Finals and NBA Finals a little bit. So I just wake up and I watch the recap. If either of them goes to game seven, then I will stay up all night to watch it live. But game one, game two, game three, like, uh, I'm not staying up till those unholy hours. Round three, fight. With this 10, you look like 16. I'll take that as a massive compliment, mate. In the top right side, guys, this time around, spawning on the top side of the map, I would be fuming. Because I don't know if this has ever been universally agreed upon or not. But I have had this speech many times over the uh, last 13 years of doing StarCraft. And not everyone agrees. But I generally believe that spawning at the bottom is way better than spawning at the top side of the map. And it's a, something that 
when i told people at first they were like i never thought of it but now that you told me i realize it too and you've ruined starcraft forever for me but i really prefer on maps like this to spawn on the bottom side of the map because i just do my best work from the bottom guys that's the way it is top right side now on the top this is team liquids a laser <laughs> In the bottom left side of the map, we are looking at the main base of the man who is just bananas, guys. Never a boring series with this man. People say it's hard to be creative in StarCraft 2. It's hard to come up with weird, unique stuff. Well, two out of three, actually three out of three games, we are watching something else. Who says that PvZ is one game first spent Stargate Oracle every game? Not this guy. This is the Maturinos Australia. And the reason I had that speech, guys, is because we are taking the gold as our natural. So it's not a spray tan? No. I, it's not a spray tan. I also don't use sunscreen. And I'm definitely not trying to be Donald Trump either. I am just a Dutch man who tans easily. So if I sit outside for an hour and a half, I tan. There's no need to be mean to me about that, guys. You can also applaud the fact that I'm not sitting behind the computer all day long. You're like, you know what? Good for you, Roddy. No need to be haters, guys. Someone pay Australia to be weird? No, this is just how Australia loves playing StarCraft 2. Mm. Roddy, are you gonna play Stormgate when it comes out? Yeah, of course. That is an absolute no-brainer. Just like I'm playing F123 next week, baby. We're racing! <laughs> racing fam, rise up! So what Australia has done here, guys, to get seven probes is to recall a bunch of probes. He laser, did he actually go all the way in? I have the feeling he didn't actually go all the way in. Snooky. <laughs> Snooky is the girl from the British television, right? Jersey Shore, or is that America? Jersey Shore, whatever. That vaguely rings a bell, but... <laughs> Apparently we're going to see Stormgate gameplay at Summon Game Pass. Yes, and I will be streaming that too. Uh, is that, that is Sunday night, right? So yeah. I'll go live, guys. Whenever you guys see me go live on Sunday, I will first play a couple StarCraft games just to play StarCraft and talk about StarCraft. And after that, we are going to watch the PC Gamer Show and you guys will finally see a little bit more of Stormgate. I've already seen a whole lot more than you guys, but on Sunday, you guys will finally see a bit more. So if you don't want to miss it, obviously follow the channel or turn on that little bell notification thingy. But on Sunday, if you guys want to watch that stuff, uh, some Stormgate announcements i guess behind the scenes look etc planning as well just a whole lot of info sunday night is there an eta on stormgate tune in on sunday night mate my lips are sealed but now they're unsealed because we need to talk about this crazy game oracle into void ray with a gold base australia seems to be very paranoid about elaser attacking it but elaser has just kind of said you know what i am not going to attack it now the queen attacking the rocks when an oracle flies in that's not the play and we can blame this on ping guys because this game is played on the european server that perhaps we can blame on ping australia loses the oracle does get four hello guys what's up with the laser why is he so angry i'm getting stressed out queen is attacking rocks queens are attacking a spawning pool stop it miko so australia is gonna play mass air here the thing is like we're playing mass air we're playing double stargate mass air but at the gold we only have one gas and if there is one thing you need when you play mass air it's gas this to me feels like a bad build but i i think it's mostly because I think Australia anticipated aggression. He says, okay, I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to take the gold. And in return, you're probably going to link flood me. Or roach rush me. Or bailing boss me. But Elaser has done none of that. And because Elaser hasn't done any of those things. I think now Australia is just in a super awkward spot. Where he's like, uh, what do I do now? And I guess the answer is he's building Void Race. Arguably the worst unit in the game. Like it, it honestly on paper makes absolutely zero sense to take a very quick gold base and then play double stargate robo as we have two adapt shading into the natural oh, they do get surrounded that's a bit unfortunate because all the units are out of position can we run no it's still a really good run by don't get me wrong eight runs for two adapts is fantastic 
Void Ray is a good unit if you upgrade shields. I think uh, you can have 3-3-3 on your Void Ray and it will still lose to an unupgraded queen. I'm gonna disagree with you, mate. Void Rays ain't good. <laughs> if Void Rays were good, I think we'd see them a whole lot more. Isn't Carrier the worst unit? Carriers are fantastic. Okay. Shield first, Void Ray. Uh, Rainer is getting inspired in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. I hope you're doing good in Italy. We miss you over here. Would have been fun if you were around. We do have four Void Rays flying into the main base. As not one, but two queens should fall here. Where are those Hydras at, guys? Where is that mean killing machine, the Hydra? You know what? I'll take it back. Void Rays are amazing. The Voids are absolutely cooking. What is this? What is this? Why do we have five Void Rays just going to town on the main base of Elazers? Elazer is counterattacking with Lynx. Finally, some more queens show up. And now the Void Rays will get deflected. What's happening with these Hydras, man? I felt like these Hydras were on the production tab for like 12 minutes. That was the slowest Hydra I've ever seen. Now, that's obviously not a thing, but it just felt like it took forever. But I guess a unit that good like the Hydra, it should take a little while. Let's be honest. It takes a long time to build a battle cruiser. It takes a long time to build a carrier. It takes a long time to build a Hydra. These capital units, it would be unfair if you can just crank all of them out at once. Lambo's tuning out as we speak. I've lost a friend, guys, because of that speech. But it was worth it. <laughs> well, this is obviously not totally worth it for Australia, as he was sending all of the units over. Okay, we have battery overcharge from the right side. Now probes are arresting the Hydras. And the mean killing machine is in a bit of trouble against probes. <laughs> <laughs> Probes surrounding Hydras, guys, with an overcharged battery. I know one thing, Skillers ain't clipping that. What are the odds of this Zergling killing the Robo Bay? <laughs> 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 Alright, that ain't happening. We've got plus one melee on the production tab now and a bailing nest. This is just a very bizarre game. I think that Elaza has just embraced the Clown Fiesta and he's like, alright, if you're gonna make it weird, I'm gonna make it weird. We now have Zealots, with Charge, Void Race, and a couple of Disruptors. We have 29 Hydras. But if we land a Nova anywhere near as good as we did in the other game, obviously we're absolutely cooking. Now this amount of Hydras is definitely not enough. Elaser could be in a bit of trouble here. Void Race flanking the Hydras. Disruptors going in. There's a lot of Elaser units running into the natural. Elaser split up his army. Can we get a Protoss recall? Can we get a recall? No energy. We have energy here. We recalled. We recalled to the third base. Okay. Ah, but the doors are open. I mean, that's so many probes. And that's a robo on power. Probably a robo going down. Here come the disruptors. Elaser! Boom, headshot. Okay. I mean, he's fighting a lot of damage, but he's also losing a lot. He is losing a crazy amount of units. These cells with plus one are doing an amazing job. What is this game? This is a bananas game. Main event, guys. Big brain bouts on Friday night. I'm not saying it because it's my, uh, my event, but I feel like it rarely disappoints. We do get to see some really cool shit almost every single Friday. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. We are now 10 minutes into our game on the Royal Blood. That's unlike any other game I've seen. And if I would have just tuned in and I see this army and I see these bases on the minimap, I would not think that this is... <laughs> The best that America has to offer against one of the best of the Europeans out there. It's still crazy scenarios where Elaze now is obviously taking a pretty big economic lead, but Australia's army has some potential. Do we have an overcharge? Do we need an overcharge? I definitely think we could have used one. Here comes the Nova, and it's good. The other one is alrighty. The first one was fantastic. The second one so so. These void rays though, they are kind of sucking, guys, like we predicted a long time ago. If only they had plus one plasma shields. They would have been able to really uh, bring the fight to these Hydras. It seems that even though Elaser has lost 45 Hydras in an 11 minute game, which honestly, uh, those are pretty insane numbers. I think he's just kind of winning. He's got the top left side, he even has his hands on the gold right now. We do have a few Zealots, but the Zealots here are going to struggle with these Queens. Obviously, 
as long as the Zerg is lair attack, like we cannot count Astray out. Counting Astray out right now would be disrespectful towards the Void Ray. And also the Disruptors. But the big problem is that he lost a lot of his Disruptors. Um, we only have a single Robo. So you can only build one at a time. But the army supplies, I think, are close enough that a few Great Purification Novas could make the difference. But they need to be fantastic. And that is obviously not fantastic. We have Bane Links coming in on the right. I'm going to go ahead and hide the production tab for a split second. Bane Links do not get anything done. But the Hydras... Oh, the Hydras are losing to Archon Voidray. It's the composition we needed all along. Warping in a whole bunch of additional High Templars. From the minimap, Elase is going to stream a whole lot more to the bottom right side. But this Archon was amazing. Is, is Max Angel winning? He's down 50 supply, obviously. But it's Lair Attack Zerk. And it's Hydras that have plus one missile attacks and no carapace. Is Max Angel winning? This game is played on the European server. That's very important to keep in mind. I mean, to be fair, plus one plasma shields right now would actually be a good upgrade. With this army, Void Rays indeed have a lot of shields. And we've got eight Archons. Like, you cannot argue over plus one plasma shields right now. That would, that would be a pretty good investment, let's be real. <laughs> it's not the first thing we normally think about in PvZ, but in this scenario, it'd actually be pretty damn good. That man was onto something. What, Australia is just spamming Archon Void Ray Disruptor. I mean, I guess it can be very good. Especially with the few disruptors, like the Hydras will have such a hard time. I'm kind of a believer in the most random, wonky ass Protoss army. Man, I wish I was as good as Australia. There is a High Templar going all by itself. You do not have Storm Mate. It's gonna be so fun if you can just do like complete random stuff and kind of make it work and have fun games. Australia has 10 gateways. He can maybe, I want to say, pick up that Archon, but that's not a war prison. I thought I saw a war prison there, but there is no prison. We have a whole bunch of slow bailings. 37 slow bailings and Nova for the ages. The first one is decent. The second one kind of just goes into a little bit of everything. Now, all these slow bailings are crashing into Archons, but there is a battery. The Archons survive. The Void Race survive. And 45 Hydras became 28 Hydras. And the 37 slow baning attack did not work out. Hey, I don't know. Do we want to guess units lost the resource staff, guys? I know you guys love a guessing game. And the winner will get a subby. How many resources did Elasa lose more than Australia? How many resources did Elasa lose more than Australia? That's a lot of guesses. Somebody's gonna have to please all these guesses in the chat. I don't have I don't have an idea. I I think my guess is around 12k. Oh, it's only five actually. That's not bad at all. It's only 5k! That's not bad. That is not bad at all. You got it? I mean somebody can take a screenshot and actually kind of guess it on the fly. Price is right. I don't know what the price is right rules are. What I do know is that Elaser is still a lair attack Zerg. And Australia is just building Archons per day. It kind of feels like he's got his hands on 17 rich Vespian guises. Elaser is now going to run a bunch of links into the net, into the main base. But there are cannons. We have 10 gateways. This is actually an insane game. So we now finally have plus one air weapons and a fleet beacon. Seven additional probes will fall. Elaser is even trying to take this base at 9 o'clock. It was a little bit under 5k. I was 4.5, 4.6, I believe. This time around, the Banelings have speed. The Nova gets a bunch of Banelings. Do we have an overcharge? No, because there's no Nexus. More Banelings crashing in. Another Nova does connect. I think the Protoss army can just fight. I don't think the Protoss army needs to run anymore. It can just fight. Elaser is going to rebuild 25 Hydras. The units lost resource step difference now is 7.6k. And one of these Novas and the Banings was sick. And the Protoss army is on creep. Now that's a little bit adventurous, but he does save the Disruptor. And Australia keeps on going. But Hydra's on creep guys are a whole different ball game than Hydra's off creep. Elaze has got the numbers. Can the Hydra, the mean killing machine, live up to its name? Or will the Archons and the Void Rays and the final few Zealots get the job done? I kind of think the answer is no. That Hydra concave too big. Hydra's on creep. They don't mess around, baby. 
And Australia made it fun, made it close for a while. But that many Hydras, the Remax of 25 Hydras on Creep, that was way too much. I think what Australia expected there was that Elazer was perhaps a little broke. I think that he thought he just spent so much on that attack. If I just go right now, I can get in the middle of all his ready points and uh, I can get the job done. But there were A, a whole bunch of Hydras left over and B, Elazer had a crap ton of bases and a whole bunch of money. Why so many voids? Your guess is as good as mine, mate. Because Australia is just a fun video gamer. That game was like watching two drunks having a knife fight in a phone booth. I have a hard time summoning up that game, but I do know that I enjoyed it. And I think that Australia enjoyed it as well. Elias was probably shaking his head a couple of times because we know that he doesn't quite love Protoss. <laughs> and I think it's going to be very hard to ever find a game that Elias was like, you know what? That was fun. That one game I played there as a Zerg against the Protoss, that was fun. I think Australia did like it. That does mean, guys, that we now go back to the American server. Score is 2 to 1 in favor of Elazer. If Elazer wins the best of 5, he walks away with 150 bucks. If Australia wins, well, obviously he gets 150 bucks too. Loser of this best of 5 will still get $50 for playing and entertaining us. And I think we can say that this main event has definitely delivered so far. I have enjoyed all three games. Even if that first one was very weird, but. Uh, there is a chance that I will stay live for a bit uh, after the big brain boss because I didn't cast WTL today. And it seems that I missed out on a banger of a day, but I had to work on this stand, guys. It doesn't come easily. Uh, so maybe we'll stay around for a little bit. I'll let Lino play some games. I think he always wants to play, so we'll see if that German nerd still knows how to play. We saw him in a big brain boss and he got smacked by Maddox, so let's see if he can do better tonight. Round four. Fight! In the top left side of Neo Humanity, we are looking at the main base of the American Protoss, the champion of ESL Masters America. Down 1 2 here in the main event. This is Australia. The last time Australia played in the Big Brain Bouts, it obviously was main event as well, and it was against Max Pax. He also lost that one 3 1, I believe. In the bottom right side of Neo Humanity, we are looking at the main base of the Polish Zerg, up 2-1, but he's now back on enemy territory, the American server. Can he close it out here on Neo Humanity? This is Team Liquid Sea Laser. Such a good WTL day. Uh, I saw a little bit of it, I didn't see everything. Um, but I did see a, a fair bit and it was indeed a very good day. It's okay, I'll do it again on uh, Monday. The only thing that sucks a little bit, guys, on Monday is that Basilisk is the second match. And what I don't really enjoy in general is casting a whole bunch of games and then going back into playing. It's actually very difficult. But yeah, it also sucks to completely ignore the first match and then suddenly start with the second match and then playing. But yeah, I don't know yet how I'm going to do it. I think I will just skip the first uh, best of seven, which is not something I normally do on Basilisk play days. But since I'm playing on Monday, I want to make sure that I'm totally happy. Because you guys know me, I'm such a big baby. I like to complain. So I need to make sure that I have nothing to complain about. Other than my lack of skill. Hmm. Yeah, for me, uh, Dave, it's two completely different modes. It's like different energy, different levels of focus. Uh, so once I'm in my casting mode, it's super hard to suddenly go back to playing games. Like I'm just... I can either do... Or oh, we've seen this one. We have seen this one, guys. This is an interesting build as well. So Australia is opening up double gate. He's building a bunch of zealots. And what he's going to do, guys, is put the zealots here in a choke point. So he has now created... He, I think uh, Australia did this against Scarlet in the finals of ESL Masters America. And Lynx cannot fight a zealot if they have very little surface area. As there is a probe, a nice probe micro there. But the probe is going to die eventually. Don't let your zealot get surrounded. This is a bit tricky, but there are two more Zealots coming in. Now I can... Oh, Queen! Okay, Zealot gets surrounded. That is a bad moment for that first Zealot to get surrounded, guys. Perfect timing on the Queen. The two Zealots are here, but at least one Zealot went down. There are two Adepts coming in, though, but the Zealot gets surrounded. I mean, it's just craziness. But I think losing the Zealots that quickly is never exactly what Australia was hoping for. 
especially you now that he ends up losing one of the adepts and he does and now even the second adept is in trouble we can't forget that australia is still a one base protoss this worked out very well against scarlet in the finals of esl masters america it is not working out against elaser i think losing that first zealot the way he did was painful and then letting the other two zealots get surrounded right before the adept showed up that was painful too I think another adept is going to fall here. I think that's too many links. Too many links. Yep, too many links. Let's cancel the shade. We'll get a few more links, but this Nexus is a bloody late. That is a problem. Australia is in some serious trouble here in game four. But he is very good in making something out of games that look absolutely hopeless. This one definitely looks a little bit hopeless, but. Link speed is done, and that means another adept is going to fall here. Uh, he laser his defense is bulletproof here. He laser says this may work in your region, sir, but this is not going to work against the cream de la crop of the European scene. It's a cool build, it's a cool strategy, and if the Zerg's fluster and they're not ready for it, things can snowball very quickly, and before you know it, it's a dead hatchery and queens are dying. But Australia just couldn't really get it going. It's a shame that uh, I don't know how important that one extra probe was, but that probe also died rather quickly. But I don't think there's anything you can really do about that. I think it's mostly about losing the one zealot the way he did right before zealot number two and three showed up. And then when the adepts were finally there, that was right when zealot number two and three died. So just painful. Australia lets the shade finish up into the main base as the links are making their way over into the main. Good reaction here by uh, Elaser. Obviously, there's some uh, lost mining time here. It's actually a whole lot of lost mining time for just two adapts, but... You know, five minutes and ten seconds into the game, a Zerg having a 5-6 worker advantage over a Protoss, that is a problem. I think Elaser is very high-key, very good. I don't think anything low-key about it. Elaser is... Uh, Elaser is excellent. Like sometimes we kind of forget, but Elaser literally is one of the most successful players we've ever had outside of the Korean scene. There are very few players that have done better in their career than Elaser did. He won a big offline event, he made a semi-final in BlizzCon, he made a quarter-final in BlizzCon. And he has had countless of top 8 and top 4 runs. Like there are very few players that can say that. Yeah. He was the only one to defeat... Well, I don't, did he actually defeat Neep? The one time that Neep didn't win? Or was it... Was it special that defeated Neep? In the one year that Neep won the 3 out of 4, it was special that defeated Neep, right? And then Elaser defeated... Special? Is that how it went? I have the feeling that Elaser didn't play Neep that tournament. So it's, it's, it's a while ago. Two oracles show up in the natural. They do grab a couple of drones. This is obviously all very important for Australia to make this a competitive game. Like, Australia is behind, but he is the kind of Protoss that can absolutely make some magic happen whenever he is behind. And we saw in that previous game that Elaser is no stranger to a reckless attack or two. Uh, it's excellent oracle movement at the moment. Obviously, cast the curse. It, was, it really was excellent oracle movement. Until it wasn't. <laughs> It will always happen, guys. 10 out of 10 times, you compliment the player for doing something well. And they're like, oh, yeah! <laughs> no sport product. Laser does make... Ah, careful, careful! There's screens everywhere! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, he's crazy, but he gets away with it! <laughs> that is a server advantage right there, guys. That is not stuff you would ever pull off on the European server or when you play cross-server. Great job turning around not once but twice and still getting a few extra shots off, but... The Roach attack is coming. Elaser is a 4 base Zerg of 64 drones. He's got plus 1 missile attacks on the way. We're probably going to drop a little bit of creep as well. And it's going to be a shit ton of Roaches. The immortal count at the moment, guys, it's 1. Is there a universe where Australia holds? 
I'm sure that if we do this like a million times, yeah. Of course, there is a universe where Australia holds. Got stasis traps, battery overcharge, one immortal. Is it this one? Well, that's a good start, to be fair. That is actually a good start. Every second that goes by is obviously going to be lovely for Australia. You can get more and more and more ready, but... Uh, the two cannons next to each other are sitting. Ducks, queens are off creep. Maybe this is indeed the moment to at least start a fight, as the Immortal is in a pretty good spot to get some shots up. We need the overcharge of the century. Losing an Archon before our overcharge is not going to help. It is not going to help. Where is that overcharge, guys? We already used it, I guess, on this one to keep the cannons alive. That was definitely not the overcharge of the century. It's way too much, Zerk. It seems that the man who won the ESL Masters in America is not going to defeat Elazer tonight. Tonight belongs to Team Liquid Elazer, who shows us that he's still feeling it, that he's still on top of his game. He is the one who walks away with $150 and a W in the main event of the Big Brain Bouts. Very fun series. Maybe uh, that last game, obviously a bit of a shame that Australia couldn't quite get his uh, crazy build going. But I think the first three games, they were all pretty fun. Uh, I mean, even this build was fun, but it's just a shame that in the end it was a bit one-sided. The Royal Blood game was definitely the highlight. That was just absolute bananas and craziness. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. How many he won money? That's a great sentence, mate. Uh, Elaza wins $150 for a single best of five. Australia gets $50. Even though he lost, he gets $50 for playing. Because Basilisk is nice like that. And one of the best things about this event as well, guys, and one of the main reasons why I know that players absolutely love this event, is that the players get paid incredibly freaking quick. Esports has a bit of a reputation of uh, stalling payments. You know, I have been there many times where I can cast an event and I get paid four, five, six, sometimes eight months later. What's really cool about Basilisk is that we do this event, the games get played, games are over, Players get paid immediately. It's been like that for 30 weeks in a row. And that's obviously super awesome. And it's just good for the scene. Uh, thank you so much to Basilis for giving me 10 more subs for the effort today. I hope you guys had fun. I hope I made you all proud. If you guys like it and you guys want to support this event and make sure that it stays around forever. What is very useful is if you guys A, give a follow to Basilis on Twitter. And whenever they make either an announcement or a follow-up post later tonight where they report the scores, that you guys can let them know, like, hey, I enjoyed that, that was fun, or I enjoyed those games. Uh, like, for instance, like this, this was our... These were the games last week, and then we post the scores later. If you guys like a post like that or re react to it and let them know that you enjoyed the show, that is very useful. Basilisk looks like a gr good fucking orc. Obviously, uh, it's going to seem that I am very biased, but I can guarantee you guys that ever since I started making my first money in esports, which was 2005, I got $75 a month from Fnatic. I don't want to brag, but I was a pretty fucking big deal in Warcraft 3. Actually, it was 75 euros, not dollars. 75 euros. Uh, I've been on a decent amount of organizations, esports orgs and whatnot in these almost 20 years. Basilisk is by far and away the best thing that I've ever dealt with. Now, I can only hope that it will always stay like that, but for me, it really is an experience like no other. And I am sure that Rainer feels the same way, and that Trigger feels the same way, and that Serral feels the same way. Because they really are. Uh, they've been 10 out of 10 to us so far. They've been absolutely amazing from the very beginning to the very end. Everything they promise, they do, and then they do a whole lot more. I am a very happy nerd being part of them. And it's obviously awesome to be part of an org that does great things for uh, the Starcraft scene overall. Not just for me or for Sarah or for Rainer, but for everyone. 